So in this video, I'd like to talk about internals of is operator in Python. As per its official documentation, uh, Python says that is operator test for object identity. With respect to C Python implementation, it would check if uh, the two objects that the two operands in our expression they point to the same object in memory or not. It's as simple as that, right? Uh, while exploring the internals of is operator, we would stumble upon some really interesting. Uh, some really interesting path that C Python took in order to implement it. Uh, let's start diving deep and just find out how it actually implements. So here what I have is uh, I have the latest pull of uh, C Python, uh, basically Python version 3.10. Uh, if you are following along, I would highly encourage you to pull the latest version of master uh, and basically follow along. So uh, what we'll do is we'll use our, uh, let's, let's first see uh, the is operator in action. So I have a uh, a equal to 10, I do b equal to 10. Now if I do a is b, it would check if both the objects are pointing to the same object in memory or not. So both variables a and b are pointing to the same object in memory or not. Uh, I have already made a video about Python caching integers uh, on how Python optimizes integer operations for smaller integers because of which here we can see that even though I have declared two variables a and b, since the value is same, it 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 internally points to the same object in memory instead of allocating a new memory or not. I'll just put the link in the i card uh, and in the description that would help you understand the internals of it. But you get the gist on how uh, basically what's the significance of is operator. Let's just quickly take another example where I'd say a uh, is equal to arpit and I do b is equal to arpit and I do a is b, it still returns true. This is not doing object, this is not doing value equivalence, but it is rather doing object equivalence. Right, so this is again, as part of optimization, this is called string interning. I've also made a video on that. I'll link it uh, in the description and in the i card. You can, uh, I would highly encourage you to go through it to understand the details of it. But basically, this is what is operator does. So is operator simply checks for the if two operands point to the same object or not. So let's start going into the internals of it. So what we'll do is uh, in order to understand uh, the internals of anything, we'll use our favorite tool. We'll use our favorite tool, which is disassembler. I'll use import dis. I'll do dis dot dis. And I'll pass in a is b, right? What it spits out, it spits out series of instructions that my Python runtime engine would execute in order to evaluate the sentence A is B. So what it did, it did load name A. So it loaded A onto stack. It loaded B onto the stack. Then it did an is op, this is op, and then it did a return value, right? Which makes sense because uh, it has nothing else to do but just compare A and B with an is operator. So here, uh, this means that the entire logic uh, about how is operator is, is evaluated is how Python would have handled the instruction is op. So what we would do is we would open the file c eval.c which holds all the code uh, about all the instructions that we see over here. So if I take this thing a little down and I look for is op here at line number 3611 somewhere around you would see how is op is implemented. So once I have, once the load name uh, on A happened, load name on B happened, which means that it added the right, uh, so it uh, basically added A onto the stack, B onto the stack, and then it is invoking is op. So now what is op is doing, is op is basically popping out the stack, so which means B gets out, which becomes a right operand, then it accesses the top of the stack, instead of popping it just accesses and then it basically says this is some optimization that C Python have done. But uh, it basically accessed the top two elements of the stack and stored it in right and the left operand. And then this is what the entire logic is. It just did left equal to equal to right. So the two elements popped from the stack are nothing but Python objects, which is A and B. And is just checking if A is equal to B or not. Right. So since we have passed object as pointer to the objects, it is just checking if two pointers are same or not. We know that two pointers, they give you true when you are doing, let's say if A and B are pointers to something, you do A equal to equal to B. It would give out if both, if the if the address that the both are pointing to is same or not. 
right? Because at then it's just integer equivalence check. So, so this is exactly what C Python is also doing. It is doing left equal to equal to right while handling is of and storing it in res. There is something very interesting here. It is doing an XOR operation with op arg. Right. Let's come to it later because what we definitely know that while using is operator, it's more than enough to just do left equal to equal to right. Why do we have to XOR with something and make things complicated? So uh, according to us, in order to implement is operator, it would have been very straightforward to do left equal to equal to right, store it in res and if res is 1, we return pi true. If it is not, we return pi, uh, we, we, we basically uh, use pi false and basically set it on top of the uh, stack, right? But then there is this very nice addition to this logic, which is XOR of OPAR. We will come to it in just two minutes. Let's just go through uh, the bottom six, seven lines here. Now, once it has uh, the result, it, 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 it basically saw that if it is one, so if they are equal, it does a pi true, otherwise it does a pi false and it stores it in B. Uh, it increases the reference of B, which means uh, uh, basically this is for garbage collection. Then it does a set top. Set top implies now the top of my stack would be set to this B, right? So instead of, instead of popping the second value and adding another value into the stack, what CPython is doing is CPython is accessing the top and then with the evaluated result, it is setting the top. Right, so this is some optimization that C Python did internally, and uh, after this operation, what we would have that top of the stack will be set to either true or false depending on uh, what the value of res is. Then it did a pi uh, decrement reference of left and right because they are they are not needed, uh, uh, and then it did a predict pop jump if false, pop jump if true. This is for short circuit evaluation and uh, some some very nice optimization that it does. Uh, this would come in very handy when we are uh, combining this part with multiple ands and ors. You would see this in action, but it's a little out of scope for this video. We will just keep it things simple with just focusing on is operator here. So now given this thing, our overall understanding is very straightforward. So left equal to equal to right, we return true, otherwise false. But why is this an XOR of OP ARG? This was the exact question which I had while I was exploring this part. So basically what I did is we, I, I, I definitely knew what my rest should have been. It should have been one or zero. Uh, but with this XOR, what is actually happening? Let's see what XOR would do. So if I have, uh, if my left equal to equal to right could be the one or zero. So if my A is actually B, then this expression left equal to equal to be valid to 1 then it is xor with OPARG. So now we know that final value of res has to be 1 or 0. So if OPARG is actually 1 right so then and left equal to equal to right so it would be 1 xor 1 which is 0 and if my OPARG is 0 then left equal to right is 1 and OPARG is 0 so then 1 xor 0 is 1 right. So what does this mean? This OPARG is nothing but doing a not of the operation, right? So if my left equal to equal to right, X or one. So if let's say OPARG is one, then one X or one is zero and zero X or one is one, right? And similarly, if my OPARG is actually zero, then one X or zero is one 0 x or 0 is 0. So I have no effect on my evaluation of left equal to right when OPARG is 0. What does this mean? This implies that OPARG is doing nothing but my is handling my is and is not. Right? Let's see this in action. So this was like basically this is how I actually dissected this thing out and just try to understand what OPARG would be doing here. So here in the console, uh, in the bottom of the screen, let me quickly do a disassemble of uh, import this, this dot this, I'll do a is b. If you see it's is op and zero. This zero is nothing but the OPARG that it gets here. So if my left equal to right is true, which is one, one x or zero, 
is 1 right and if left equal to right is false and OPRG is 0 which is in case of is op when I am doing A is B then 0 XOR 0 is 0 right. So, at the end the resultant value which is RES is nothing but 1 or 0 depending on is wala thing. Now, if my OPARG is 1 which is which what we deduced was it was doing the not of it. So, what if I do this dot this A is not B let us see what it generates. It generates the same set of instructions with is OP and then the argument is 1 right. So, this 1 and 0 is nothing but OPARG value. Now, when I am doing an is not, it is basically I would have to invert whatever I have got. So, here what it does is let us say my A is actually equal to, so my left equal to equal to right is true and my OPARG is 1. So, true is 1, 1 x or 1 is 0. So, when my left equal to equal to right is 1, x or 1 is 0, when my left equal to equal to right is 0, which means it is not equal, x or 1 is 1. Right. So, it is kind of inverting when my OPARG is 1 right. and this is exactly how C Python implements is and is not using this very elegant way right. So, if we were like normal humanish coder we would have done like if OPARG is 1 then do this else do this. Why did C Python developers not chose that and chose this very seemingly complicated way to implement this. The whole secret lies behind the actual machine level instructions which are created out of it. So, whenever you add branching to your code, the actual machine level instructions that are generated, there are too many instructions which are generated versus doing a mathematical operation. So, doing this operation of XOR, it is very cheap on the CPU because your CPU instruction set has a native support of implementing XORs and all the and all the bit manipulative operations add subtract uh, doing XOR not and all of those things. So, C Python developers are actually leveraging that and making things a little complex for a normal sane developer like us to like basically understand but this is such an but basically this is such an interesting implementation of a seemingly simple thing right. So, they opti so uh, uh, this is where we should appreciate how the actual developers of languages think about like every single CPU instruction that is being generated to make their language like as fast as possible, right. Now, uh, that basically now that we understood the importance of OPARG left equal to right and how is and is op are implemented, what do we do next? We trace the path from the grammar to this point. Right. So, uh, if uh, where does it exactly read this argument? So, how, how, how does it get this argument? Where are these instructions generated and, and, and how it goes here? So, to do this, what we do is we open the python.grammar file. So, python.gram is the file. It is specifically to version 3.10. Uh, if you are using any other version, I would highly recommend to pull the latest code. Otherwise, the grammar has been totally changed in Python version 3.9. So, you might find a totally different grammar there, but it just would be same. So, what I do, I just look for is space not, right. So, here we find, so this is the only place where it is not and is are handled. If you see, it invokes this function pi peg n by, by, by uh, then it does a cmp op expr pair and it passes p is not a and in the line just below it, it passes is right. So, here we see whenever it is getting is not, it is passing is not and whenever it is getting is, it is passing is. So, these are constants which are defined in a file, we will open that and we will see what exactly it is happening here. So, we understand that it is basically invoking the same function and either passing is not or is depending on what it got while uh, actually passing the language. Next step, let us open this function. If I open this function, or I wanted to search, if I open this function and uh, wait, instead of opening this function, it would be much simpler if I check for is not. If I check for is not, we find in file compile.c. Basically, compile.c is the file where all the logics, where all the logic about generating instruction set is being done. Right. So, we stumble upon this part line 2531-ish, where if my case is is not, it does an add op 
uh, underscore i some c is op and one this is nothing but the instruction that we saw when we ran disassemble right so for case is it is also doing is op for case is not it is also passing is op which we actually saw while uh, during our disassembly and what we also saw we also saw how a uh, different op arg was passed and this is exactly where that op arg is passed so if it is is i am passing in zero if it is is not i am passing in one right so this is where the code the instruction code that we saw during disassemble is being generated over here so with this very simple strategy it is actually doing this but now there is more <laughs> so if you see this is nothing but we would have seen like this is doing like normal comparison right so why are they not doing a compare op which we already saw in the previous video how they use basically compare op to compare uh, less than equal to greater than equal to and all of those things so if you see these are special cases so for a general uh, comparison like equal to not equal to less than less than equal to and other these are doing just uh, setting cmp to that particular integer value these are all constants which are defined like if you see it said a uh, defined pi ge to be 5 so whenever you would do that uh, a uh, greater than equal to b you would see that argument to be set as 5 uh, let's let's try that now uh it, it's it's easier said than done let's check that i'll do import this this dot this uh a greater than equal to b and if i do this what we saw that pi ge what it should do as per our logic it should uh add an instruction so it would come here uh greater than equal to is what you are doing we should set cmp to be equal to 5 and then it would do break once it breaks it comes here it doesn't add op i and adds compare op and cmp so cmp was set to 5 with that pi ge if i do this see the fourth here it's it took in compare op which is right here and with the argument op arg as 5 so through this it actually identifies that what kind of operator are we passing are we talking about equal to not equal to greater than equal to less than equal to and those part so this is exactly how python actually generates the code for whenever you are uh, giving any uh, comparison operator then this is exactly what happens behind the scenes to generate a code for like greater than equal to less than equal to and all so i would highly encourage you to explore the path it's not hard even like i am just doing that i am just so i have not set up any gdb or any fancy stuff all i am doing is control f finding the things out just just using my problem solving skills or just basically using my intuition to just drill down the code base and try to make sense out of this very seemingly complicated looking code but it is trust me it's really very simple to go through this when it's obviously very fun to do so as well right so primarily in this one we explored how uh, the internals of is operator and is not even is implemented we explored how arguments are passed over here uh one thing that i would leave for you guys to uh, explore is what exactly add op underscore i does right and while doing this you would also stumble upon how to pass non integer argument like that would be a very interesting deep dive for you guys to do i would highly highly encourage if you are into c python internals and you find this amusing explore that path uh, i stumbled upon few really interesting nuances there uh, i would highly encourage you guys to do it and yeah we saw how is operator is implemented and is not also and uh, basically that is it for this video uh in case you guys like this video give this video a thumbs up if you guys like the channel give this channel a sub and i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton